Welcome to the FAIRCOM webinar series. In this webinar, we will see how to enhance microfocus visual COBOL applications with Ctrace for COBOL. Ctrace for COBOL seamlessly replaces the file system used by your COBOL compiler. It provides high-speed transaction processing, protects your data, and improves scalability. And it adds SQL access to your existing COBOL data. Let's see how it does that. In this tutorial, we will perform the following steps. Compile and run the tutorial to represent a native COBOL application, switch to the Ctrace for COBOL file system, and migrate the existing data to Ctrace for COBOL. And then we will create the XFD file descriptor and map the ISAM data to SQL to provide both SQL and ISAM access to the same data. Before we begin, there are a few simple steps to be completed. This tutorial assumes you have installed Visual COBOL 2010 R4 and Ctrace for COBOL. If you have a different version of COBOL installed, some of the commands may be slightly different on your system. It also assumes you can start the Ctrace for COBOL server and connect the client interface to this server. If you don't know how to install or start Ctrace for COBOL, please refer to our website. I like to start by rounding up the files we will be using and putting them all in one folder. We can create a folder called Tutorial and place the tutorial in it. Ctrace for COBOL needs a configuration file, which you may have created when you installed the product. If you don't have one, we'll create it shortly. Let's include a copy of CTUtil and a DLL used by the application. And MFConvert and a file associated with it. The Ctrace for COBOL connector needs a configuration file, which tells it about the Ctree server and the data files it will map to COBOL. The table used in this tutorial is called Customus, so our config file looks like this. You also need an environment variable that points to that file. This environment variable points to the configuration file, which tells the Ctrace for COBOL client how to connect to the server. The variable needs to include the full path and file name even though everything in this tutorial is local. The Ctrace for COBOL documentation explains this configuration file. Let's make sure the Ctrace for COBOL server is running, because we'll need it later in the tutorial. On a Windows system, you should see a service called Ctrace Database Engine. If it's not running, start the service. And finally, let's verify that Microfocus has an environment variable pointing to the proper Visual COBOL directory. We are now ready to begin the tutorial. Step 1. Run the tutorial to simulate a native application. Before we can run the tutorial, we need to compile the program. We will compile and link. Some versions of COBOL do this differently. The compiler has created an executable version of the program. Now we can run our program to simulate a native COBOL application. We press C to create the table, P to populate it with records, and D to display the records. This represents data your application has been gathering over the years. Notice the program has created the customus file. This is a native COBOL data file that contains the records we saw on the screen, which represents your legacy data. Step 2. Redirect the file system to Ctrace for COBOL. For our next step, we're going to change from the default Visual COBOL file system to Ctrace for COBOL. In this version of COBOL, all we need to do is set an environment variable pointing to our file handler. Notice that you don't need to alter your source code, nor do you need to recompile or relink. Once you set this variable, the COBOL runtime will use Ctree. If we run the tutorial again and attempt to display the data, we'll see an error. That's because we have not yet imported the data from the native file system into Ctree. This brings us to our next step. Step 3. Migrate your existing data. In this step, we'll copy the data from the existing Customus table, which is stored in the native file system, into Ctrace for COBOL. We do that by compiling and running our conversion tool, mfconvert. This is a COBOL program that reads your data from the native COBOL file system and places it in a Ctree file. This program does not want the Dyn redirect variable set, so we'll run it in another window with a default COBOL environment. Specify the name of the source COBOL file and the destination Ctree table. This created a Customus dat file in the Ctree SQL data folder. We can see this table using the CTUtil tool. 
Switching back to our tutorial environment, we can run the program again. This time, the tutorial will find our data in the Ctrace for COBOL file system. The data we migrated from the old Customs table to Ctree is being read by our tutorial. In step two, the program returned an error because this table did not exist in Ctree. Now the table is populated and the program is reading the data from it. In these simple steps, we've told our program to use the Ctree file system and we've migrated our ISAM data from the native COBOL file system into Ctree. Step four, create the XFD file descriptor. Now let's see how easily we can add SQL access to our existing ISAM data. Extended file descriptors, called XFD files, establish the mapping between your COBOL files and the SQL tables. The Create XFD directive must appear in the COBOL source module to create these files. Our tutorial already contains this directive as a comment, so all we have to do is remove the asterisk. In a real project, you'll need to place this directive inside every COBOL program with files to be mapped to SQL. Now that we have the directive in our COBOL file, we can extract the XFD. In Visual COBOL, this step is very simple. All you need to do is compile your program. We will compile and link. Some versions of COBOL do this differently, such as compiling with a dash X parameter. Notice that you can see the file descriptor, which has been created by the compiler. Step 5. Map ISAM data to SQL. The final step in our tutorial shows how to integrate this ISAM data with the Ctrea SQL Server, allowing you to have native SQL access to your COBOL data. We start by linking an existing ISAM table to the SQL database, which is done through our CTUtil tool using the dash SQLize parameter. Run the tool indicating the name of the table we want to link and its extended file descriptor. You also need to include the administrator's password, admin, and the name of the database. Ctree SQL. Notice that the XFD must be in the same folder as CTUtil. The utility uses the XFD to create an extended data definition, called an XDD, which defines the data schema and other key aspects of the database. The XDD is described in the FAIRCOM documentation. Now that we have SQLized, we can use Ctree SQL Explorer to view this data. Once we connect to the Ctree server, we can see the Customs table as a SQL relational table. Remember, this data was originally created by our COBOL program, just like any existing legacy data your programs have created over the years. We can add, delete, edit, or change this table as a pure relational database. Keep in mind, we are seeing ISAM data natively accessible by COBOL. Now we can go back to our COBOL program and read the record we just inserted. We can see the data, including the new record we just added. That record was inserted with SQL, and COBOL is natively accessing it. The data is still in pure ISAM format, so your COBOL programs access it seamlessly. Now we have the benefit of the high-performance C-Tree transaction processing, and we have the power of accessing this data with SQL. Just this easily, you could connect your native COBOL data to an Excel spreadsheet. But that's a topic for another tutorial. That's all there is to it. We have just migrated ISAM data into Ctrace for COBOL to provide robust, high-performance access to your data without rewriting your existing application. And we have made that same ISAM data accessible to SQL applications concurrently. Thank you for joining us in this webinar. From Faircom.